Okay, this is the P1 paper from October 2020. Question number eight. It's a differentiation question. We're going to be looking at the equation of a tangent later on. What I'm going to do, you want to, might want to just fast forward this bit if you're not interested in it, is before I get started with the answer to this question, I'm just going to do a bit of extra work. You do not need this for this question. But the fact that they've given me this curve here means I'm going to just quickly tell you what's going on with the question. Okay, so if we've got that question there, that graph there, I know from my graph work, or I should know from my graph work, that that is a cubic. I know what cubics look like. They look like that, or they look like that. This is a positive cubic, because I've got x and x squared there. So it's going to look like that one. And if it's hitting the axis at 2, and then at minus 4 twice, the only possibility for this graph is it must do this. Cut through at 2, just touch at 4. And I say you don't need any of this, but this is just to explain sort of what's going on with the rest of the question. That's what my graph looks like. They're going to ask me to differentiate. I'll be able to do that in a second. And then they're going to say we've got the equation of a tangent at x equals 6 which is going to look something like that, and that's L1, and they're going to tell me that L2 is an equation to a tangent where L1 and L2 are parallel, means I'm going to get somewhere over there another line. This will be L1, and this will be L2. So that's just what's going on with the question. You didn't need to know any of that to be able to solve this question, so I'm going to get rid of all that, but it's a nice opportunity to be able to just explain graphically what's going on. However, we can do this question without doing all of that because the first part just says, can you differentiate that? Yes, I can. What I need to do first of all for part A, I've got y equals x minus 2, x minus 4 squared is I've got to multiply out that, um, expand all those brackets. So if I was doing this, <clears throat> I would do x minus 2 and multiply this bit out first. You can take your time to do it, x minus 4 times x minus 4 if you need to. Um, I'm okay with doing a, a, a squared. It's going to be x squared minus 8x plus 16. If you can manage to do the a plus b, a minus b all squared quickly, then that's great. But don't sacrifice accuracy for trying to speed up um, a piece of work here. Now I'm going to do x times all of it and minus 2 times all of it. Well, x times all of it will give me x cubed, 8x squared, and 16x. And then minus 2 times all of the second bracket is going to give me minus 2x squared. Be careful here. Plus 16x minus 32. And then that should all tidy up too. What have we got? We've got x cubed. I think we've got minus 10x squared there. 32x there, and minus 32. Right, perfect. So now I've got it into a format of something that I can differentiate. I can just go through and differentiate. Multiply by the power, take one off the power, and so on and so on. Multiply by the power, take one off the power. By the time we get down to x's, they just become the constant, and any constants just disappear. So 3x squared minus 20x plus 32, and I think we were asked to show that so good stuff part a done so part b says the line l1 is a tangent at the point where x equals six can we give the equation of the line and they want it in that sort of format okay yeah absolutely i can do that part b oops if i want to work out the equation of a straight line in this case the equation of a tangent I always need to know y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Do I have the coordinates of a point and do I have the gradient at that stage? Well, no, not yet. I've actually got to go through and work those out. So at the moment, the only thing that I've got is x1. So I need to work out y1 and I need to work out m. 
Doesn't matter which order you do them in, but please tell me what you're doing. So if I'm gonna do M first of all, just tell the examiner for M, dy by dx, this is how we're gonna get M. M is the gradient, there's the gradient function. 3x squared minus 20x plus 32. So I'm going to use that function there when x is equal to six. So three lots of six squared minus 20 lots of six plus 32 and work out what that works out to be, which is 20. So I've got m for y1, that's going back to the equation here. Y1 is going to be equal to, again, putting x equals 6 in, but this time it's 6 cubed minus 10 lots of 6 squared plus 32 lots of 6 minus 32. Calculate that and see what that all comes to. And that works out to be equal to 16. So, as I say, if I'm going to be using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, I've got a little method where I always tend to just write down here what those values are, makes it easy for the examiner marking my work to see where my values are coming from. And also just less likely to make a mistake with copying errors if I've got that information written down there as well. Nice little tip. Um, so chuck everything in. Y minus 16 equals 20 x minus 6, pretty straightforward, and I've been reminded as I'm going through that bit, yeah, they want it in the form y equals mx plus c. So y minus 16 equals 20x minus 120, y equals 20x minus 104. So if we go back, part b, in the form y equals mx plus c, done. So part C now says the line L2 is a tangent at the point where X equals that alpha there. Given that L1 and L2 are parallel and distinct, can we find the value of alpha? Well, I've explained it on the diagram. Let's explain what we're going to do here. If it's parallel, then what we can say is that the two graphs would have the same gradient. OK, so if we from our original graph, remember, let's just quickly do it. But when we had our graph. So I'm trying to rush that. <laughs> okay, when we had whatever our original graph looked like, which I think I said was something like that. Okay, so we've got this point now where x equals six and we've got some other point over here somewhere where it's the same. The one thing we can say is that the gradient here is gonna be the same as the gradient there. And we know what the gradient there is because we've just worked it out, the gradient there is m equals 20 it's up there okay so what i can do is i can put that l1 and l2 both occur when the gradient is equal to 20. how do i do that algebraically then so if the gradient is equal to 20 remember the name of this thing it's the gradient function i hope your teachers are telling you that Yes, it's the differential, it's dy by dx, it's f dash x, it's all sorts of other things. But a better um, name for it is the gradient function. It gives me the gradient at any point. Well, I want to know when is the gradient... Excuse me, get my pen sorted out. When is the gradient equal to 20? Um, so, minus 20x plus 32 equals 20. That's going to give me... Uh, the solution to that equation will give me um, what I'm looking for. Right, I'm hesitating there because I'm just looking at it to see, is this thing going to factorise? So minus 20x plus 12 equals 0. I'm always looking to see, does, in this case, does 3 divide into all of them? It doesn't, but I would always be looking out for that to see if that's a little trick that the examiner sometimes do. Otherwise, you can put it into a quadratic formula, but please, your first... Option should always be to see if these things factorise. I'll do factorise and quadratics as a separate video. I'm not doing it here. Uh, you just got to get good at them. Just go away, practice, practice, practice. Um, once we've got that, that's going to give me 3x minus 2 equals naught or x minus 6 equals naught. 
This is going to give me x equals 2 thirds. And this is going to give me x equals 6, which we already knew. So actually, I'm underlining those ones. It's only this one I wanted. And because we knew x equals 6, if you were struggling to factorise, you should have known that x minus 6 is a possibility of one of the two things in the brackets. Let's just go back and see what did they actually want. They just want the value of alpha. The value of alpha is x equals alpha. So alpha is equal to 2 thirds. Probably finish off actually by saying alpha equals 2 thirds. To make it really clear that I understood what I've done there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense as an answer.